Welcome to Equipping Leaders, a podcast where I share and discuss resources, tools, and information to equip leaders to build creative, cohesive teams through culture and leader development. Welcome to the Equipping Leaders podcast. I am your host, Natasha, and today I am sharing this solo cast on accountability and ownership. Regardless of your industry, we all hear the word accountability all the time. Usually it is viewed through a negative lens, like as a way to get people to be more accountable for their actions and to really prove their efforts. But accountability has many facets and they can run the gamut from negative to positive. While accountability and ownership are different concepts, they easily go hand in hand, especially in the realm of leadership. Accountability covers the area of responsibility for something, while ownership is more of an internal drive to take responsibility for something. A great example of this was Dwight Eisenhower when he was planning Operation Overlord, specifically when it came to the invasion on D-Day. He was ultimately responsible for the results of D-Day, and while we know it as the largest amphibious assault and a wild success for World War II and the Allies, at the time, it was unknown if it would succeed. There were 400,000 service members involved that day, and essentially the fate of the world. Ike demonstrated his accountability and ownership in a tangible way by writing both a triumphant speech if it were to succeed and a speech taking full responsibility if it failed. The failure speech lived in Ike's wallet for a while, but it can now be found at the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. In a situation as large as this, Ike could have pointed to multiple reasons why the attempt at Normandy failed, but he didn't. He had ownership of the situation and he was willing to be accountable, even if that meant it would jeopardize his career. When he was writing the failure speech, he crossed out the words, this particular operation, and replace them with my decision to attack. That is what great leaders do. They are responsible for the positive and the negative outcomes. This is also a place where leaders are set apart because not only is there the aspect of being accountable and taking ownership, but there's also making that as visible as it needs to be without trying to chase some public image. So how do we approach accountability on a daily basis? There are two things that come to my mind when I hear this question. The first is to ensure that accountability counts for both positive and negative situations and is not just used as a gotcha mechanism. Many times we approach accountability as a way to help others improve or be more responsible for something. Many times we approach accountability as a way to help others improve or become more responsible for something when in fact it should be acknowledged on both ends of that spectrum. When we're trying to press someone to be more accountable, we provide the objective details as to how they are not being accountable and what they need to do to be perceived as accountable in that situation. We use a similar method on the positive side. We acknowledge objectively how someone was accountable. The second thing to consider when it comes to accountability is how we approach it. I have found Jonathan Raymond's accountability dial to be very useful in this. The accountability dial is a five-step model that helps leaders empower accountability in their team members. You move through the accountability dial if a behavior does not improve. First, you have the mention, and this occurs in real time when you pull someone aside, never publicly, and inform them of something that you've noticed. At this stage, it is a truly curious question that is checking in on the person. It's also the opportunity to halt a pattern from forming. Next is the invitation which is another one-on-one conversation that provides the individual with examples as to the behavior that is becoming a pattern. Third is the conversation, and this is a more formal one-on-one that explores the behavior and how it's holding the person back, but what can also be done to readjust moving forward. Next is the boundary, which is setting a timeline for the actions or behavior to change. And then finally, there's the limit. And this is the final heart to heart to give that individual a last chance to change before their role in the organization potentially needs to change or to end. There is a story about four people named everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. And I'm sure many of you have heard this before. There was an important job to be done and everybody was asked to do it. Everybody was sure somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did it. Somebody got angry about that because it was everybody's job. 
Everybody thought anybody could do it, but nobody realized that everybody wouldn't do it. It ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done. So this very simple story highlights why accountability and ownership are so important. Things will not get done, random people will be blamed, and relationships and organizations will fail or fall apart. David Marquet, author of Turn the Ship Around and the Language of Leadership, notoriously took command of the USS Santa Fe, which when he took command was a low-performing submarine. But in his time as the commander, he turned it into one of the best submarines with a culture that leader experts around the world have studied. What Marquet did was he treated every person on board as a leader, and the crew was considered one of the most empowered teams with multiple promotions every promotion cycle. Even after Marquet left the submarine, it still won awards and continued to be a shining example of leadership. The accountability that he embedded into the culture was long lasting, and it benefited both the individuals and the organization. Accountability looks really different among companies and industries. Accountability in a hospital is going to be different than accountability in the military, which is also going to be different from a consulting firm. Regardless of where you are, you can improve accountability and restore the positive side of it by creating psychological safety. Psychological safety is present in an environment where people are not afraid to speak up and know that when they do, they're going to be heard and listened to and not shut down. When leaders create that space, it not only makes for a more creative work environment, but it also empowers accountability. Join me next week when I share a conversation with United States Army leader David Laura on accountability and ownership for today's leaders. Thank you for listening to this episode of Equipping Leaders. This season, there is an associated blog for each podcast episode, which can be found on my website, natashacheyenne.com, under Leadership Journal. My website also features other leadership development content, such as frameworks, book recommendations, a weekly newsletter, and other downloadable content. You can also follow me on Instagram at novel underscore Natasha and on Twitter and Facebook at Natasha Cheyenne. Join me next week for another episode.